everything good. Hello, everyone. I'm Abla Hassan. I teach Arabic language and culture to Nebraska University. It's my honor and my pleasure that today uh, I'm, I'm joined with Sayyid Muhammad Baqir Kashmiri, Vice Chairman of Imam and the representative of Jurist, to share with us his wisdom on one of the most problematic uh, questions that any serious course on religion can hardly escape. And I mean by that the problem of pain and suffering. Um, Sayyid Muhammad Baqir Kashmiri comes from a, 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 a great family, well-known family, recognized for their high levels of education, piety, and dedicated service in supporting the Muslim community. Sayyid Muhammad Baqir Kashmiri completed most of his religious studies in Iran, beginning in the holy city of Mashhad and later continuing in the holy city of Qom. Sayyid Kashmiri studied under the guidance of the most prominent teachers in the Muslim world. As the representative of the supreme religious authority, Sayyid Sistani, Sayyid Kashmiri moved to Los Angeles, California in the year 2000, where he later founded the Imam Mahdi Association of Marja'iya Imam, an organization aimed to support the Shia community in North America by being the central point of communication between the Shia Muslims in North America and their spiritual religious leadership Marja'iya in all matters pertaining to beliefs and religious duties. Later, he and his family relocated the Imam headquarters to Dearborn, Michigan. A writer, an author, and a lecturer. Sayyid Kashmiri has participated in numerous activities and projects throughout the years. He has supervised and published various Islamic magazines. He has authored pieces of his own, such as Jurisprudence Manual for Youth and Shia Muslims, Our Identity, Our Vision, and The Way Forward. And he has established credibility for numerous religious, re religious authors by writing forewords for books. He has given numerous speech and written research papers and articles on various subjects. Today, in a global Islam current debates, Arabic studies Nebraska talk series, we are meeting Sayyid Kashmiri for insights on the problem of pain and suffering. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why does God allow pain and suffering in the first place? What historical, spiritual, and religious lessons can help us deal with the obsessive questioning of God's justice in allowing evil. I know my students now can't wait for me to stop and for you, Sayyid Kashmiri, to share with us your wisdom on such a big question. To you uh, and, and then after uh, 30 minutes of, of your talk, we're gonna, as usual, pose for questions with the students. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be with you. Um, thank you for the invitation. And uh, I hope uh, offer something that benefits uh, our beloved students as well. This is really a sensitive and deep topic that so difficult to present it well within 20, 25 minutes. But I'm going to uh, do my best, and in case you have any questions, uh, you can address it uh, afterward. So, to start with the answering this or explaining uh, the why there is suffering and evil in this world and how it comes and justify it with the justice of God, uh, we need to start with some introductions. These introductions are a principles. If we don't understand these principles, it's so difficult 
maybe it is impossible to understand the result or justify. Uh, Islam as an ideology, it is not only just religion, it gives us a full system, ideal system, which we call, call it from ideology perspective, in Arabic, we called al-nidamul ahsan, the, the, the ideal system. So we have something here and there, but if we take a collective uh, view of it, we will see there is a, an ideal system. Put this in your mind, I will get back to it ideal system. The second point is all this existence we see is absolute good. This is what Islamic ideology says, states. The all existence is absolute good. And evil, evil or uh, suffering is nihilistic something that comes later, appears later, it is not essential because the absolute good is exist, is the existence. While evil is not existence, it appears to us, it's nihilistic. The third point, which is third uh, point of the introductions I'm talking about, uh, whatever, what we perceive of evil or suffering is an episodic. It is not substances. We call it in Arabic, it is arab. Arab mean episodic, not substantic, not jawhar. We call it jawhar. So you have something essential and something appears to you in different way. I will explain it uh, with, with uh, uh, different examples. So you have the main thing, main concept or main existence of something, but you see its effect, its signs, its uh, uh, color, for example. Um, these called um, in Arabic, Jawhar and Arab, episodic or substances. So we, or Islamic ideology uh, present, present all the suffering or evil in this world uh, as uh, it perceived it as, as what? Episodic, not substantial. For example, just uh, let me get rid of this with an example. Uh, humanity, all of us, we are mankind, but we are colored people. So when we have maybe with a white color, one is a black, one is yellow, one is this, one is brown, one is that. So in the world, we have different colors, but all of us, we have one essential. We have uh, uh, same uh, existence as a human. So human is one concept, there's no doubt about it. There's no discussion about it, no argument about it. But the differences comes from where? Not in humanity, in coloring, in describing people, how are they from different perspective, not from humanity, because humanity, mankind is one, no, nothing else. Um, as long as I brought example, let me give more example, if you don't mind. Uh, for example, sickness, if someone become ill, become sick. So we say this person is sick. He or she goes to doctor and try to get some help from doctor with taking medicine or so. When we say he or she uh, is sick, where is the sickness? Can we see it? Can we, can we uh, describe it? We say, the health is existence, really, is real existence. It is a substance, matter, while the sickness is episodic. Why? Because we don't, we can't understand the sickness 
if there is no health. When we miss the health, the sickness appears. That's why I'm trying to give this introduction to explain what is the differences between these two and why we say the existence is absolute good while the suffering and evil is nihilistic. One more example. Um, uh, uh, when we say uh, poor, uh, some people we have, uh, they have uh, income, they have good financial uh, uh, situation. Uh, they are just normal, while some other people, they are in suffering. They, they are poor people. Poor people, they need uh, help. So how we explain it? When is the poor? How, how we can describe it? As long as there is no prosperity, there is no wealth, the poorness appears here. It's the same, exactly as, as I mentioned. The, th the fourth point and last point in these introductions before to give the answer of the main topic, uh, something we called in Arabic, nisbi wal mutlaq. What does it mean nisbi and mutlaq? Uh, Dr. Abla, you can uh, always, you can intervene and uh, help if I use different terminology that in academic, uh, our students, they, they don't use my, maybe. So, Amur uh, Mutlaq and uh, Nisbi. Mutlaq is absolute, absolute. While Nisbi called, uh, when you compare something to other, and I'm going to give some examples to understand this. What does it mean? Um, let's say uh, a bad example, maybe uh, snake. Snake, when uh, feels fear, absolutely will take a defense way and finally will attack on you. So to you, to me, it is evil. It is suffering. It is bad thing, but to, to the snake, no, it is good. It is positive because a snake wants to defend uh, itself. Another example, sometimes we see in the city, in the town we live in, there is a beautiful building. Um, um, uh, definitely it is new, definitely it is uh, useful. But uh, we see a company comes over, they buy the home or building, whatever, they destroy it. They destroy it totally. They fill it down. Then they establish a bigger building, which is, for example, a school or hospital. So the first action was wrong in my eyes and maybe your eyes. You see why this is a good uh, building. This is a blessing. Why this company destroys it? Because they have a better result because they look to something that benefits more people, benefits community, not only one building or one home or one business building to serve one person. This called mutlaq or nisbi. This is absolute benefit, absolute suffering, Oh no, this is Nisbi in comparing, in comparing to me, to you, to the community. No, we will see it in different way, good or bad. Uh, same thing, for example, um, uh, uh, rain. When, when it's raining, many people, they look to rain, raining, and it is good. It is a blessing from God that many people everywhere um, agriculture uh, will be so happy by, by uh, raining. While those who they have uh, humble houses established from clay, no, maybe rain will demolish them, will, will destroy the, their homes. Again, it is absolute think or in, in comparison. This is nisbi or mutlaq, how we look to this uh, stuff. So, if these uh, introductions are clear 
to you. Now we can justify it. We can give the answer. Whatever we see of, we call it suffering or we call it, this is evil, evilness. Um, it comes from one or two uh, things or uh, because of two reasons. The reason one, unfortunately, it comes, whatever suffering we see, it comes uh, from our bad action, our bad deeds. We, the human, unfortunately, uh, we do bad deed, we take wrong actions, and then we eat from it. This is not from someone else. It is not from God. It is not from, uh, we can put it on others. Uh, even in, in our religion, in uh, Islam, in the Holy Quran, we have so many verses indicates, uh, indicate to this. For example, if you like, write down uh, chapter 30, 30, Arum, R-O-U-M. Chapter Arum, number three, uh, number 30, verse number 41. It indicates that whatever corruption you see in this world because of what people do bad actions. And this is what they gain from their bad action. And why we allow that to happen? Maybe they will come back and uh, correct what they did it. See in the world what's going on today. And it is not in you. All these nuclear bombs, one, two, three times happened in the history. Just remember Hiroshima, Nagasaki, And still, till today, after all these decades, we are suffering of it. Is it from God? It is from uh, some other uh, existence in this world? No, it is from our hand. Uh, you see climate change. Every day we have so many arguments and many things about uh, how these companies and they, the, the main countries who they have big uh, industrial um, activities, how they should uh, stop uh, their activities or at least put it in a right way uh, to make less bad effects on climate change. Or you see all this food we, uh, today we eat. Majority of food we eat is not organic. Why? Is this from God? Absolutely not. Definitely not. It is from our hand. So we can blame. We can put blame on others or, or on God. This is number one. This is the first reason why we have evil or we have suffering. Uh, second reason, uh, maybe some people, um, they did know any mistake. They are purified people. For example, um, uh, prophets who God himself, he chosen them because they are the ideal people. They are infallible people. Uh, we have many examples. Just one example is uh, Prophet Ayyub, who went through a lot of suffering. He was sick, and he lost uh, all his uh, all, all his wealth, uh, things that he had. Then God returned it to him. He uh, recovered. Uh, he gave him recovery, full recovery. So why that happened? There is uh, the Islamic ideology explain says that. God, sometimes it is not from you, it is from God. Why? Because he wants to take you to a higher level of advancement, of education, of uh, to be more stubborn or to be more uh, 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 strong, stronger, to be stronger. So uh, if you don't if you go through difficulties, suffering, you will not be strong. As called in English, no pain, no gain. Everything easy come, easy goes. So uh, to get a higher level, to achieve a better achievement, definitely you need, we need as a human, we need to go through some difficulties 
to uh, achieve the good results. Students without hard working in university, for example, you guys, if you don't work hard, no one, no one will expect in the end of the year will have good result. No pain, no gain. One more thing. Sometimes when God sends his difficulties to us while we did nothing wrong, it is not punishment. Again, it is not punishment. It is sometimes just for reminding because when we move forward, we, uh, explain, we uh, invent many things. We uh, try to be the best uh, as we can when we serve uh, ourselves with every day with all these new technology we have, a new power we have, a new advancement we have, we forgot God. We forgot who created us, who created this whole universe, who created all this, uh, these things. Now, God, want, God wants to remind us to say, hey, okay, stop. This is good. Move forward. I want you to be at this level. I I like to see you are successful, but remember that is there has a God there who gave you all this uh, power, who gave you all this blessing that you are moving forward. Um, the commander of uh, believers, uh, Imam Ali, uh, the, the uh, sec uh, successor of uh, Prophet Muhammad says, uh, someone asked him, how, how you knew God? Uh, how come, um, by, by what you get uh, to know to God? He said, Allah He said, I, I get to know to you, God. I figured out him. I found Allah. I found God. When I plan everything perfectly, but at the last minute, last second, I lose everything. Then I understood there's another power stronger than me who, uh, who, who controlled this world. And if I get success, it, would be, it will be from him. If I get something wrong, that means I didn't plan, I, I didn't work uh, perfectly. So while I work good, I do something perfect, then they didn't come out. The result doesn't see, I don't see the result. Uh, the result doesn't take place. From this perspective, I understand, I understood that there is another powerful one who controls me and controls this world. Again, why we feel suffer, why we face and challenge suffering or evil because of our bad deeds? No, not necessarily, but because God wants us wants to remind us that still he is exist and everything exists because of him. One more thing, all suffering, all challenges we feel in this or we see, we face in this world also push us to respect each other, to work, which is with each other to support each other because materialism puts everyone in his or her world, puts everyone in its world while the problems, issues, suffering will return us to our humanity again because I need you, you need me. All people need each other. Without this need, we will not find ourselves as a one human family, one mankind family. Um, that's why today we see, we noticed actually, we noticed everybody, um, you noticed during this pandemic, COVID-19, how people, how different countries, how different uh, companies, those countries, they, they fight with each other. They attacked on each other. So many wars, so many problems. Companies who uh, they tooth and nail 
fight with each other just to gain more customer, more money. All the world came together, aligned and united just to fight one enemy called COVID-19. And finally, finally, people resort, resorted to God. Everybody in this suffering with no medicine, with no solution, and people were dying every single minute. We were losing thousands and thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of people in different parts of the world. Everybody went back to God and remember God. Everybody start working hard with everybody else, even those who consider themselves enemies, to find some solution and finally with a short time and comparing to other vaccines with a short time, finally, more than one country, more than one uh, company were able to uh, invent and bring a, a, a solution vaccine and offer it to people. And today we see different countries, they offer it for free just to save mankind. This call, by this, let me conclude here, time is over. Uh, with this, we call uh, Islamically, the most important is not personal or individual benefits as much as the plural, as the all mankind benefits is required, is the priority. This system, which we called it ideal system. I go back to the first word I start my, my presentation with. This, what we called ideal system. Yes, here and there, there is something that we see it bad, while in general, it is good. Just remember the beautiful castle you have, whatever, or small home you have. Let me give better example. In downtown, uh, important city, let's say Washington DC, let's say Chicago, let's say New York, Manhattan. If you are lucky, you have just a few square feet, foot, uh, square feet just to establish a small apartment there to live in it. So you will invest in each single square there. Why? because it is too expensive and no, no one, not everyone can afford it. So why in that small house or small apartment, we still, we have a place for shoes. We have a place for, uh, uh, as called storage. We have a place as a bathroom. Are these our priorities? Definitely no. We can't compare them to a bedroom or the, the um, kitchen or, or whatever other areas that most important, why they are part of this apartment, while the other things are more important because the system, the system of apartment should contain all these parts to call it to be called apartment. Otherwise it will not be completed. This universal, this world that we see is the ideal system because it covers all the need we have, all the need we feel, all the need we need to fulfill. Even in my point of view, your point of view, this is suffering or this is bad. No, we say everything is good, all existing is good, except the, those things that in our point of view, we look at it from negative perspective. Let me end it by here and leave the rest time for uh, questions, if there's any. I know in the uh, email message I received from uh, Professor Abla, it was some other topics also mentioned, but they are very, very controversial and it needs more time to uh, tackle. Thank you so much. And I'm here to serve and ready to answer your questions if there's any. Thank you so much, Sayyid Kashmiri, for the beautiful message, for your valuable insights on a very important question, especially 
during our times, times of global pandemic of COVID. Uh, I bet my students have a lot of questions. We're gonna pause for that. But before we pause the, the uh, recording, uh, a message from you to the Muslim community, uh, to viewers, or uh, updated activities from Imam organization, any updates from you you'd like to share with the viewers before we disconnect? Uh, I would prefer to keep my time to the students because uh, maximum 11, uh, 10, 15, and my time 11, 15, I have to leave. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you so uh, much. Actually, always, always you can visit our website and see the activities and, and our message. Just and I want to take your time with it. Yes, and I'm going to make sure to share the website with the students on Canvas so you can know more about Imam. Thank you so much, Sayyid Kashmiri. Thank you for uh, supporting Nebraska University. Thank you. No problem. Thank you.